One of the more controversial issues in human nutrition relates to saturated fat. Uh, for years, saturated fat has been considered the major villain in causing cardiovascular disease and is associated with various uh, diseases, including diabetes, certain brain problems. Uh, there's a lot of confusion about saturated fats. Uh, in fact, a, a number of books in recent years have come out basically uh, vindicating saturated fat and pointing out the flaws in the many studies that found problems with saturated fat that were published in the past. Now, what is saturated fat? Saturated fat has no... Uh, fats are made of, uh, of basically hydrogen bonds, uh, the, the chains of carbon, I should say. They have containing hydrogen. Saturated fats have no double bonds in their structure. Whereas monounsaturated fats, such as found in virgin, uh, extra virgin olive oil, they have one double bond. And polyunsaturated fats uh, are called polyunsaturated because they have two or more bonds. In simple terms, what this usually means is that saturated fats are solid at room temperature, whereas monounsaturated and polyunsaturated tend to be liquid at room temperature. So that's one way of looking at it. Uh, now, you know, there's different characteristics of saturated fat. Saturated fat is a general term in that there's various fatty acids that make up saturated fat. For example, there's two saturated fats. One of them is called palmitic acid. The other one is called stearic acid. Uh, both of these are found in meat, for example, and both are long-chain saturated fats. Uh, and it turns out that, uh, that palmitic acid causes a greater uh, increase in blood cholesterol levels than stearic acid. Stearic acid, uh, again, those are, the, those are two saturated fatty acids found in meat. Stearic acid causes no increase in cholester and cholesterol. And, uh, and stearic acid is the predominant saturated fat found in meat. So, so meat does contain a saturated fat, palmitic acid, that could theoretically increase cholesterol levels. But again, the predominant fat, a saturated fat in meat, is stearic acid. Uh, now, in uh, medium chain triglycerides, you have, for example, caprylic acid and capric acid. Now, it turns out that uh, that, capri that uh, the caprylic acid uh, increases ketone levels more than capric acid. Caprylic acid happens to be the type of saturated fat found in most commercial med medium chain uh, triglyceride supplements. And uh, you sh I should also point out that a lot of people don't realize medium chain triglycerides are themselves a saturated fat, even though they usually are found in, in a liquid form. They are saturated fats, and they are capable of raising low density lipoprotein, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, now, where did this all start? This this notion that uh, that saturated fat causes cardiovascular disease. Well, it it started uh, in the 50s, the 1950s. Where, where many studies link the consumption of saturated fat with increases in blood cholesterol level. These studies combined with observational research on the association between diet and heart disease led a, a, a guy named Dr. Ansel Keys to uh, propose what he calls his diet heart hypothesis, which suggested that saturated fat raises blood cholesterol and thus increases the risk of heart disease. Now to, uh, to uh, arrive at that hypothesis, he, he provided data from seven European countries. But you know his uh, his the, it was called the seven country study. However, he, it's been criticized over the years for not including other countries that didn't prove his hypothesis about saturated fat causing heart disease. And there and there was uh, there was data available from 22 other countries that and, and he that didn't and, and uh, Keys didn't discuss any of the data from these other 22 countries in his seven country study. And, and, these countries followed uh, uh, the, the local indigenous population uh, and uh, many of the communities that they, uh, the other studies uh, observed consumed large amounts of saturated fat yet had no indication of heart disease. This included people like the Kenyan Maasai tribe, the Tokolil in po Polynesia, and the Arctic Intuit who used to be called Eskimos. The Arctic Intuit uh, or uh, people eat large amounts of fat from, let's say, whale blubber, that type of thing. Uh, but of course, they also are famous for uh, eating a lot of uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, omega-3 fatty, in fact, the whole omega-3 uh, fatty acid uh, notion that it protects health was derived from early studies that compared the uh, 
uh, Alaskan Intuit people with the uh, Danish people showing that despite eating large amounts of saturated fat, the uh, Intuit people had very low levels of cardiovascular disease. Uh, however, they, they did unfortunately have higher levels of strokes because uh, the omega-3 fatty acids tend to um, uh, favor certain conditions that can cause a stroke. But, you know, that's another story. Compared to carbohydrates and unsaturated fats, saturated fat raises levels of what they call lipoproteins and most blood lipos, lipids. Lipids is another word for fat. Uh, lipoproteins are basically fat complex with proteins. Fats, uh, fats cannot be, uh, because the, uh, blood, the blood plasma is mostly water, uh, fat and water don't mix, so the fat has to be carried attached to various lipoproteins. And you have, for example, low-density lipoprotein, high-density lipoprotein, uh, and there's several others. Uh, and this is the way uh, fats and cholesterol are carried in the blood. Uh, saturated fat favors the production of larger or more fluffy LDL particles. See, one of the uh, criticisms of, of uh, saturated fat in relation to cardiovascular disease is that saturated fat increases low-density lipoprotein. Low-density lipoprotein, or LDL, has been associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, but there's a couple of caveats to consider in this. First of all, low-density lipoprotein is only dangerous when it's oxidized. When it's not, when it's not oxidized, it's the main carrier of cholesterol to the body. And cholesterol, contrary to popular opinion, is an, is an important substance. Your liver makes one gram a day. Cholesterol is needed for the uh, production of cell membranes. It's needed for the synthesis of test testosterone. And, and, uh, and, and also it's uh, used in the brain for various functions. And LDL is the main carrier. So again, LDL is only dangerous when it's oxidized. And um, more recent research showed that LDL, uh, there's different subfractions of LDL, and it turns out what they call the large or fluffy form of LDL is much less prone to oxidation. Therefore, it's not nearly as dangerous as the small, dense LDL. That small, dense uh, form of LDL is actually more subject to oxidation and therefore more likely to be associated with cardiovascular disease onset. It turns out that saturated fat raises the fluffy large LDL. So even though saturated fat does raise LDL, it, it raises the, uh, the the type of LDL which is considered safer. Uh, I should also point out that saturated fat increases high density lip, uh, lipoprotein or HDL, which is considered protective against heart disease. But it should be known that um, you know a lot of uh, websites point this out that saturated fat. Uh, raises HDL, but it should point out that the the, uh, the uh, potency of saturated fat in raising a, a protective HDL is only 10% as much as it raises LDL. But again, it raises the uh, the LDL that it raises is a large fluffy version, which is considered not dangerous. Uh, saturated fat does increase the number of LDL particles, or the actual number of LDL, and that unfortunately is considered a risk factor for uh, uh, cardiovascular disease. Saturated fat may also uh, uh, worsen systemic inflammation by increasing the absorption of what they call lipopolysaccharides. These are byproducts of, uh, of uh, bacteria produced in the intestine uh, that are what they're also called endotoxins, which can p penetrate, sometimes penetrate the uh, intestinal barrier and, and uh, once they get into the body, they can cause systemic inflammation, which, was, which is related to a number of diseases, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer. Uh, now, even small amounts can, uh, uh, of this LP of lipopolysaccharides can elicit an uh, a, a inflammatory uh, response in the body. <clears throat> in fact, I wrote an article in my Applied Metabolics newsletter about a theory of how lipopolysaccharides entering the blood can damage uh, the, uh, the, let's say, the machinery in the testes that produce testosterone, and this could actually cause low testosterone in men. Uh, that, that also is a, a theory. It has some evidence behind it. I, if you're interested, I have an entire article on that. It's in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's in the archives, available to any subscriber. Uh, uh, you know, a systemic review found no, despite this, this idea, that lipopolysaccharides, uh, which are, let's say, promoted by saturated fat, can cause inflammation. 
they did have a systemic uh, review, and they found no consistent associations between consumption of saturated fat and a variety of inflammatory biomarkers, including cytokines, adipokines, acute phase reactants, and cell adhesion molecules. These are all substances that, when they're higher, and they, they, they get when they're higher in the blood, they're indic they're indicative of systemic inflammation. Uh, so th this particular study found that saturated fat does not raise any of these markers. So the notion that saturated fat uh, can increase systemic inflammation is not really straightforward. It's not really uh, written in stone, uh, and it probably likely is uh, a much less of a problem than, than some people think. Uh, despite a logical, a logical theoretical framework connecting diets high in saturated fat to atherosclerosis, Meta various meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is a uh, is a uh, is a, a, a study that looks at past studies and tries to come to a, a logical conclusion. The meta-analysis of observational observational obser observational studies. Now this is important because an observational study doesn't look at cause and effect, and correlation does not equal causation in science. So you always have to be careful of observational studies. But these observational studies have reported no significant, no significant associations between saturated fat intake and the risk of coronary heart disease, stroke, or cardiovascular disease in general. Now, on the other hand, I know I go back and forth, but saturated fat does raise levels of a substance called lipoprotein A. Lipoprotein A is, acts like LDL in that it promotes cardiovascular disease. Uh, high levels of lipoprotein A are, are, are uh, considered three, uh, increase the risk of cardiovascular disease by 300%. Two studies with large, sam with, with large sample sizes, controlled diets, and direct measurement of free testosterone reported that compared to high-fat diets, low-fat diets reduce total testosterone in healthy men. In fact, there's only two types of fat that maintain testosterone levels. One of them is saturated fat. The other one is monounsaturated fat, such as found in virgin olive oil, macadamia nuts, and that type of thing. Uh, now, the interesting enough is that while, uh, uh, while a low-fat diet can uh, lower levels of total testosterone, it doesn't seem to uh, affect levels of free or bioavailable or active testosterone, which is kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if anyone's really explained how that could be possible. Now, another thing to remember about saturated fat is it aids in the absorption of calcium into bones, so therefore it can prevent bone degeneration diseases such as osteoporosis. In addition, other studies show that saturated fat, or I should say the saturated saturated fat, uh, saturated fat, um, uh, saturated fatty acids can act as signaling uh, uh, molecules involved in a number of benef beneficial effects in the body. Uh, you, the lung surfec surfectant, which lines your lungs, helps you to breathe. That's made of 100% saturated fat. So that's something to consider also. Uh, also, I would add, you know, the, the, so I guess we could sum it up by saying that, uh, you know, this, this notion that uh, that saturated fat definitely causes heart disease is very questionable. There's never been there's never been shown any direct cause and effect relationship between cons consumption of saturated fat and, and the onset of cardiovascular disease, other than the fact that it affects this low density lipoprotein cholesterol, and now we know that it actually increases the the more beneficial large fluffy LDL cholesterol. So, you know, this whole thing about cardiovascular disease and saturated fat, very, very questionable, but there's things to t take into account. I, I still think that, you know, this notion that you can eat un unlimited amounts of saturated fat is not accurate because uh, you know, there are some studies showing that large amounts of saturated fat can directly damage the beta cells of, of the pancreas, which produce insulin. Again, this is very large amounts. You'd have to be eating, for example, an 80% or higher fat diet that consists largely of saturated fat. And some people who follow ketogenic diets actually do this. They, they consume as much as 80% fat, much of which is saturated fat. I don't think that's healthy.
I don't recommend that at all because, you know, there's an old saying in pharmacology, only the dose determines the poison. And I think it also follows the principle, which I've written many times in my Applied Meta Metabolics newsletter, a principle called horme hormesis, which, which states that substances up to a certain, many substances up to a certain point are beneficial, but if you go past that point, they, they turn toxic. And saturated fat probably falls into that category, meaning it's, it's probably pretty safe up to a certain point, but if you overdo it, it can cause bad things to happen in the body, such as this uh, attack on the uh, beta cells of the pancreas. Also, the uh, an excess amount of saturated fat is related to insulin resistance, which is a precursor for type 2 diabetes. Uh, an excessive amount of saturated fat will, you know, stimulate some cholesterol, which can harden cellular membranes, um, which makes uh, hormone receptor activity a little bit more problematic. I can go on and on, but, but the point being that saturated fat, here's the take-home message, saturated fat is probably not nearly as dangerous as it's been portrayed, but to say that it's completely safe to eat, to consume in unlimited amounts, I feel is inaccurate. I don't recommend that. I think that uh, saturated fat really you should keep it to a uh, to a level of about. Uh, well, you, let me let me backtrack. The amount of saturated fat that's safe for any person I think depends on activity level and other aspects of the diet, such as how many antioxidants you're consuming from food. Even though saturated fat is not subject to oxidation. It can produce effects in the body that do lead to oxidation. If you're eating stuff like fruits and vegetables, fiber, uh, if you're, uh, you know, fiber to help promote uh, intestinal microbiome activity, which also helps to control saturated fat use and cholesterol use in the body. Also, exercise. The more you exercise, the, uh, the less danger of saturated fat becoming a toxic substance to you. Uh, saturated fat is much more dangerous to people that are inactive and sedentary. And uh, uh, also, I, I would suggest that um, uh, that the, the amount of, of refined carbohydrates also plays a role. If you don't, if you eat only natural carbohydrates and you don't overdo carbohydrate intake, I, I believe, and you're active and you're physically active, I believe your body will burn off most of the saturated fat you eat. So again, you have to look at your overall lifestyle to determine how much saturated fat you could consume. So uh, that's about, I, I could have talked about some of the chemistry of saturated fat, but this would have made the video go on and on and on. The short chain, medium chain, uh, long chain, and very long chain saturated fat, such as arachidonic acid, which is also sold as a supplement, that's a very long chain saturated fat. I'm not going to go into that because it just, it's just unneeded biochemistry, and uh, it's not going to, no, of no real practical use to those of you listening to this, unless you're biochemists. So I'm going to stop now, uh, and uh, also I'm, I'm going to advise you that I do discuss a lot of the nuances about saturated fat and other types of fat in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I also talk about nutrition, or I should say I write about nutrition, supplements, exercise science, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy that work, uh, hormonal therapy, fat loss techniques that actually work, uh, exercise science, all of this is covered in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. 40 to 50 pages every month, no ads, just evidence-based information. I, I have 56 years of constant study and empirical experience. Nobody could match my background as far as that goes. Uh, I don't care what your education, whether you have uh, P multiple PhDs, MDs, you will learn something in every issue of my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I absolutely guarantee that. Uh, those who do subscribe to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, I will, I will send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where I Almost every day I put additional studies and information related to nutrition, exercise, and general health. I also answer questions on the Applied Metabolics Facebook page, and I answer questions submitted to me by subscribers uh, on my email portal located on the Applied Metabolics site. But I only respond to subscribers. I don't respond to unsolicited emails. Thank you for listening, and if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Take care.